Finally, we're going to discuss what is called the time constant. And much like the uh, separation of variables that we see when we do resistive forces, uh, we'll see this again uh, when we do capacitor charging and inductor charging in AP Physics C. So let's first of all define what we mean by the time constant. The, uh, for exponentially increasing or decreasing systems like we have uh, when we have our, we're graphing our velocity versus time, our acceleration versus time for these kinds of resistive forces systems, the time constant tau, and we use the symbol tau for this. It's not a T, it's a tau, the Greek letter tau. Uh, it's a way to summarize the rate of decrease or increase. And the reason that we need this is when we're talking about these types of systems that I have graphed here, you can't just say, all right, how much time does it take to get to terminal velocity? Because it takes forever to get to terminal velocity. So we need some other way to describe it. Um, because this will, neither of these, uh, this one on the left right here, this, this one will actually never get to rest. It approaches rest, but it never gets there. Similarly, this never gets to terminal velocity. It approaches that, but it goes through infinite amount of time before it gets there. So we need some other way to describe uh, the rate of these increases and decreases. So what we do is we use what is called the time constant. Uh, the time constant is this. For decreasing quantities, much like the velocity decreases when you throw something horizontally through a resistive medium, the time constant tau is the time it takes the system to decrease to 36.8% of its maximum value. That happens to be e to the negative one. Uh, for increasing quantities, it's the time that it takes the system to get to one minus e to the negative one or 63.2% of its maximum value. Let me, let me just get out a calculator here. Uh, raise e to the negative one. So here's one, make it negative, and I'm gonna put e to that power. e to the negative one is 0.367879, etc. Notice that's about 36.8% approximately. And if we did one minus that, so if we did one minus e to the negative one, so I've gotta do that like this, I get 63.2% approximately. So these percentages come from just e to the negative one. So let's go ahead and take a look at this on a graph to see what we mean here. Um, and let's raise this up a little bit here. So for decreasing quantities like this first one we have, the time constant is how much time it takes to get to 37 or 36.8% of its maximum value. So it starts at V naught is its maximum value right there. And about there is, this is approximately 0.368 of V naught, initial velocity. The time that it takes to get that to that point is what we call the time constant, tau. So it's how much time it takes to get to 36.8% of the maximum value. Uh, for decreasing quantities. When it's increasing, this value right here is 0 0.632 of V terminal, which I'll represent with V sub T. That value right there, it takes about one time constant to get to that point. The longer it takes to get to 36.8% of V initial, uh, the longer this whole decay takes. And similarly, the longer it takes to get to 63.2% of V terminal, the longer this entire motion right here. So this is a way that we can kind of express how long this process takes. It never gets to zero over here, nor does it ever get to terminal velocity over here, but we can have a definite time where it gets to 36.8% of the initial velocity over here, or in this case, 63.2% of the terminal velocity right here. And that's what we define as tau. Now let's take a closer mathematical look at this. To extremely simplify this whole idea, let's just look at it this way. 
the time constant. What is it? For exponentially increasing or decreasing systems, the time constant is just the time tau at which the exponent of e will be negative 1. That's all it is. Let's take a look at, with an example. What's the time constant for an object thrown horizontally with no gravity with initial speed v0 through, through a resistive medium with the force resistive equal to bv? Well, as we've already derived in prior videos, this situation is one in which the equation for v in terms of t, v is just v0 times e to the negative b over m times t. And I just remember this using itty bitty, that little mnemonic b and t are tiny up there. So itty bitty, negative b over m times t. So what does t have to be so that this exponent will be negative 1? What do we got to make t so that the exponent equals negative 1? Well, that's really easy. If we just make the exponent uh, or t equal to m over b, that means that v will equal v naught e to the negative b over m times our time m over b cancel 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 that's just negative one there thus at this time right here v will equal v naught e to the negative one which approximately equals um, v naught times it's approximately 0.36.8%. So that's the time at which the speed is about 36.8% of V naught at M over B. So this is our time constant. Therefore, the time constant tau is just M over B for this system. There it is. So that's just the time, and when you figure out the units of this, they will come out in seconds. Tau is m over b for this system. Let's try one more. Now, uh, in this situation, uh, we've got what's the time constant for an object drop from rest in a gravitational field G through a resistive medium. Uh, again, the resistive force is BV. Well, as you recall from this situation, V is equal to uh, V terminal. times 1 minus e to the negative b over m t. Well, hey, this is the same type of exponent. So that just means at t equals m over b, v equals v term, terminal velocity, times 1 minus e. And once I put in m over b again for that time, I'll just get negative 1 again here. And that happens to be 1 minus e to the negative 1 is just approximately v term times 0.632. So again, we have the same time constant. The time constant right here uh, is just tau equals m over b. So our time constant for both of these kinds of systems is just the time m over b. And when you calculate the units of that, it does come out in seconds. What this means is that for this decaying uh, function of what the speed is when you push something through a resistive medium with uh, no gravity, at time equals right here, m over b, at that point right there, it'll be 36.8% of the initial speed. At that time, m over b. Over here, at time m over b, at that point right there, maybe not to scale here, but at that time, that speed will be 0.632 or 63.2% of terminal velocity. So that's what the time constant is. And we'll see many, many systems have a time constant that's similar. Uh, basically, all you got to do is figure out, okay, when is the exponent of E equal to negative 1? And that is simply the time constant, the time where the exponent of E is negative 1. It's that simple.